Cool. All right. So healthy habits, what are they and why do we need them in our lives? So um, I, the points we're going to talk about tonight is just how you shift yourself into healthy habits. The five pillars that I really live by, which is your goals, organization, healthy eating, exercise, and your lifestyle. And I just as an introduction, I'm going to run you through who I am. So my name is Simone Louise, um, and this is my journey across my three children. So from 2014, when I had my first son, through to 2018, when I had my third son, um, this was my journey of my weight going up and down and what I did through my health and to just maintain myself. So over my three pregnancies, I've lost 57 kilos in total. So uh, a true testament to show that you can really go up and down. Life happens, things change uh, as we age, our bodies change as well, but it is possible to stay fit and healthy or to even reach new levels. And I'm certainly healthier and fitter now after having three children than what I was before having them as well. So my fitness journey um, into having my own program and platform has started with my online fitness app, which is called uh, Fit for Life. And this is really where it started for me. We wanting to deliver health and fitness services to the shift working community. And by that, I mean anyone that works out nine, outside of nine to five. And for myself, that is my dynamic. My partner is a shift worker and has been for over 12 years. We've got three young kids. And at the time, I had a corporate career as well. So finding time for my health and fitness was really difficult because the children were always with me. I couldn't go to a regular gym. I just really struggled to find that support that I needed. So I decided to create the support that I needed for myself. And I knew that so many people around me needed as well. And that's how how my Fit for Life program came into fruition. Now, when we were stuck in lockdown last year, I was, you know, stuck at home like everyone else. And I started thinking to myself, what is it about health and fitness that people find so challenging? If it was so easy to eat well and exercise, then how come we're not all doing it? Why is it so difficult? And I literally sat down with a post, a block of post-it notes and started writing down all of these things that make up my day. What are all these little healthy things? What are these little habits that I've created that that allows me the time to exercise and meal prep and do what I need to do within that. And I actually designed that into an online course, which I just launched at the end of January, which is super exciting. And these um, topics that we talk about each week are based on the foundational pillars of what I have in my course as well. So you're kind of seeing little snippets behind the scene of what I've got in my online course. So let's get into talking about healthy habits and what they are. And it is so much more than just eating well and exercising. Although I find exercise is definitely my favorite part and I openly speak about how it has helped my emotional health as well as my physical health, I really use exercise as an outlet. It's time for me um, and I didn't understand this when I first started exercising, but I actually use it as a time of meditation, a time to just get out of my own head and get away from the to-do list. And I just focus on myself and my body and what I'm doing in that moment. And using that half an hour each day to exercise just has become so pivotal in me being healthy, not just physically, but emotionally as well. But there's so many things that you can do for healthy habits. You can journal, you can practice your gratitude, you can meditate, uh, you can prepare healthy meals for you and your family, practice all your deep breathing, your box breathing techniques, connection with friends and family and positive people around you, eating mindfully away from screens and devices, which, you know, we're all so prominent to now with working at home and all of those sorts of things. We are constantly uh, got a screen or a device near us. So it's really important to try and get that break away from it. Visualizing your goals and setting the goals, having them really clearly identified is really helpful. So you know what you're chasing and you're striving towards and surrounding yourself with the right people as well. If you've got a bunch of people that are, you know, always sort of on the pessimistic side and just you just feel like their energy doesn't align with you it's really great just to sort of move away from that and surround yourself with the right crowds and the right people so spending quality time with your family 
listening to good music is always key and I always say this even when I'm doing my face-to-face fitness classes I'll tell them if you don't like the playlist please let me know because I know it makes a difference right music is uh, ingrained and it's so much into our soul so um, stretching as well is so underrated and as well as good sleep we all know that and sometimes it's difficult especially if you have young children to get a good night's sleep but these are the healthy habits that will really change your life breaking down your housework into small tasks spending time outdoors uh, having those mini pamper sessions drinking more water and just trying new things these are all healthy habits that we can introduce into our lives and it doesn't just have to be about exercising and eating well and it looks different for everyone and by no means am I suggesting that you need to do all of these but this is some ideas of where to start and what you can do for you so let's talk about setting some goals and why that is so important essentially why you need to have goals is because it builds your self-confidence it increases your productivity it helps you focus It gives you a motivation to succeed and it provides the availability to be more informed about the decisions you want to make. So when you have good clarity about what you actually want to do and where you want to go, you can then break that down into the steps that you need to get there. And without being really clear on what those those goals are, you'll often fall off the wagon. You don't have a sense of purpose to achieve it and therefore you don't it doesn't happen. So time blocking is something that I like to use very efficiently for myself. I am a business owner. I'm a mum of three kids. I often feel like a single parent as well with my husband working away a lot, as well as doing shift work. So time blocking really gives me that ability to focus and it helps me manage my overwhelm and anxiety as well because you know there's always housework to do there's always a business priority that needs to be done but at the end of the day when I can block out times in my calendar to make things happen it makes me achieve more because I'm getting things across the line and I like to really um, share with everyone that multitasking and time blocking is not the same thing When we multitask, we're actually splitting our focus into different arenas and quite often we don't complete anything. We end up with 10 things that are half done and it doesn't happen. When we time block, it's almost like a mini challenge to ourselves that you go, oh, I have an hour to get this done. Okay, I'm going to focus now and I'm really going to make that happen. So that's the difference between time blocking and multitasking. So time blocking, the benefits of really doing this is it helps you great, it helps you gain a greater understanding of just how long it takes you to complete a task. And this will help with future scheduling and making commitments. So inside my course, we actually go into how you break that down and we have an Excel spreadsheet and you can actually learn how to time block specifically. But you'll be very surprised how long it actually takes you to do some tasks and how much you can get lost in scrolling the newsfeed or being on social media or these other things. Honestly, you lose half an hour to an hour without even knowing it. It is absolutely shocking Um, when you break down your time into a time blocking format, the productivity really, really comes. And I do this not just in a business sense, but I do it with everyday tasks like housework. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I do all of my folding and ironing and I'm going to give myself an hour, an hour and a half to do it. it. Stops me procrastinating about things. It really pushes me to action. And I use that in all areas of my life. And it really helps me give my kids some focus time as well when I'm going to go, okay, this stops right now. No phone, no business tasks. I'm going to play with the kids and just focus and be present with them as well, which is really important. I also believe that a really great healthy habit is to reflect on how your month has gone. And an important thing to reflect on is 
doing this exercise month after month, it really increases the quality of your goals. It improves your results, but most importantly, it leads to better self-awareness. So if you've, you know, look back at your month and think, wow, I really had a bad month of not eating well, not looking after myself. It's a great opportunity to go, well, why was that? What was happening around me that um, put me in those positions? So just being able to reflect is really, really great. Now, meal planning is an amazing tool to use. And I like to explain it as if meal planning is asking what's the dinner, what's for dinner question once for the whole week instead of every night, which is really great. Now, I still have some friends that I haven't converted yet. And when I hear that they're running to Woolies every afternoon to go and buy something to cook for dinner that night, I just cringe at the thought of that. Now, meal planning looks different for everyone. And it doesn't mean that you have to spend two or three hours in your kitchen every Sunday prepping things out. Um, there's really some great ideas that you can do this around uh, what works for you and your lifestyle. And you don't have to do it every single day. You can definitely create a meal plan that has your day off or has, um, you know, so many differences within that. And yeah, Amanda, I love that. So meal planning really helps you keep on track, right? Yeah. And to a budget. And I hate wasting food. So I know if I've already pulled something out, planning that for dinner, and then I really don't feel like cooking, I'm like, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to throw away that produce. <laughs> nope, just get in there and just cook it and get it done, which is really important. Now, grocery shopping is a great thing that really falls off the back of meal planning. So I highly suggest that you create what you want to cook first, write your list of food out, what you need, and then you go grocery shopping. Don't walk around the aisles of the shop trying to work out what you want to cook for the week. Uh, it's really overwhelming and you come up with so many ideas and then you end up buying everything and you don't use it all very effectively. So if you create a meal plan and then go to the shops with a shopping list, not only will you save yourself money because you're only buying things that you're actually going to cook, you save yourself time because you can just effectively, whether you're going in the shop, whether you're ordering online or doing a click and collect, um, any of those things, if you've got your list, you can shop so much more efficiently and it really saves you wasting food. There's nothing I hate more than wasting food. Um, so when you're clear on what you want to cook and how much you actually need, you're not buying those bits of everything. And then at the end of the week, think, oh, okay, I bought a whole bunch of celery and I didn't do anything with that. Well, just now it's ruined and that's five or ten dollars down the drain when you're throwing away that produce. So being really efficient in these ways um, can help you in, in so many ways as well. Now, another big thing with our food is what I hear often with a lot of my clients is, but I eat well, I don't eat McDonald's, I'm not eating takeaway, how come I'm not getting to my goals? And it can be really uh, challenging to navigate the whole portion sizes and food labels. So it is really good to understand what the nutrition label is. And it's a shame that we're not taught more about this in our younger days, because there are so many benefits to this. I'm not going to go in detail of, of all of this tonight. We do go specifically through this in my course. But what's something really important to notice, and I say this a lot with yogurt because I think that's the easiest example to really visualize, is when you're trying to compare something, say you've got two different yogurts and you're trying to compare which one you should have, just be mindful that the container is the same size because if you're not contain measuring something that's actually the same units, uh, you're not going to be accurately making your best decision. And the best way you can do that is just to look at that per 100 grams. If the container is not the same size, just look at that per 100 grams. And it really depends on what your health and fitness goals are to what you need to be paying attention to. But just as a really basic guide for tonight, the things I would look at is the sugar. I would be trying to choose something that has lower sugar. Uh, that would be my highest focus if I was just trying to make a really simple, informed decision. Other things that a, a label will tell you about is the fat content, how much fiber, um, your overall calories, um, salt, all those sorts of things. So there's lots that you can actually benefit from depending on what you need to look at as well. 
And oh, just as another just side note, with the ingredients, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but that's actually in order of how much is in the product. So you can see down here in this example, um, it says that I think this was from a box of neutral grain or something like that. Um, the cereal component is the highest part of what's made of that product. And then it goes down the list. So if you're looking at anything in an ingredients list and sugars in the top three or four things, you can pretty much know that it's going to be uh, not the healthiest, healthiest choice you can make. Now let's talk about exercise. It's by far my favorite part of living a healthy lifestyle. And, you know, there's, there's so many components towards exercise. And what I like to tell people is you really need to find what works for you and what you like. There's no right or wrong when it comes to types of exercise. If you really enjoy dancing, go and dance. If you like sports, go and play a sport. Um, if you like gym workouts and those sorts of things, find what motivates you. Because if you like what you're doing, it doesn't feel like a burden or a challenge to do. You actually feel excited to be able to do it. So Within my program, we talk a lot about functional fitness, which is exercising without really machinery, just using some light hand weights and things like that. Um, I break down and I really explain to people about your menstrual cycle and how that affects your exercise and how you should be doing different things throughout your cycle as well. So if you've ever been to um, a any sort of sport or even your gym workouts or anything, if you've been to a class or you've done your training session and you are really thinking, yes, did that, great. And then next week you come in and you've got no energy and you're feeling so flat and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what happened? I felt like I was really great at that last week and I'm not this week. A lot of the time that actually has to do with your body cycle and where you are energy wise. So um, yeah, I break down into my course, what sort of exercises best suit different parts of a female reproductive cycle. Now, watching out for injuries and being mindful of those types of things are really important. So whatever type of exercise you're doing, make sure that you've got a coach that is properly explaining things to you uh, and being really aware of your own body's needs. So if something doesn't feel right, don't ever push through doing it. You should always feel comfortable enough to speak up and just say, oh, I, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Could you just check this? Or uh, is there something else I can do because that's really not suiting me? And then working out if you would like to implement um, any supplements into your dietary requirements. If you're trying to hit some specific health and fitness goals, um, you might like to take things such as like extra protein supplement or something to help with your recovery so you can exercise and move well a little bit more. Seeking out really good advice for that. Um, and by that, I mean, don't Google. <laughs> I think it's really important to know that Anyone can publish an article on the internet. So it's really important that if you're trying to make informed decisions of what's for you, what's right for you, please speak to your allied health professionals, whether that be your GP, a dietitian, a nutritionist. It's always a good idea to have a blood test before you start taking anything just to know where you're at. Um, Sometimes people in supplement shops and health food shops can be very helpful, but at the same time, they do have marketing and quotas to meet and there is a lot of brand affiliations and stuff like that. So just be really mindful that uh, your information, where you're making your decisions from, where you're gathering your information is from a trusted source. Now, putting it all together into your lifestyle so you can just feel it's all flowing into one. And some really big important things is being okay with eating out and going to restaurants. A lot of my clients who have come off a challenge or have lost a lot of weight can then feel overwhelmed about going into social situations because they don't want to regress and go backwards. Um, so they can actually start to isolate themselves and not want to socialize because they don't want to be tempted by those things. But it's really important to know that life is all about balance and it's okay to have a meal off and to go out and enjoy the things you like. It's all about moderation and just 
learning how to effectively do that. So one of the parts in uh, the online course, which is super fun, we actually dive into menus and we talk about how to read them and what you should look out for and all those sorts of things because things are worded differently. I'll never forget this one time that I ordered breaded chicken and I was so shocked when I ended up with a piece of schnitzel. I had no idea that that's what they had just made up a fancy name for that. So I'd ordered just a deep fried piece of chicken <laughs> and I really wouldn't have made that choice otherwise, which is quite, quite funny. Um, and moving that into just creating things for your lifestyle, making sure that you're making time for the things that are important to balance it all out. Because it's not about never eating takeaway again and then not ever socializing again and never doing the things you enjoy again. It's the finding the balance so you can have everything. You can have it all. It is possible to have it all. And the inner work that we need to do with that as well, which is our self-love and our self-care, which is super important to be aware of. Uh, it, the work does start inside. It starts in your mind much before you start eating a salad, before you get into that exercise class or you start that team sport, you really need to start being kind to yourself. And we are the worst people at judging ourselves and criticizing ourselves. And it's honestly, it's a form of self-sabotage. That's what we're really doing for our health and fitness on so many levels. So being kind to you. So I'm really happy if anyone wants to screenshot this shot again, just those healthy habits to take into consideration. And I think it's really important to note as well, as health professionals, from the outside perspective, it looks like we've just, we've made it all happen, right? We make it look easy. We make it look like this just Overnight, we decided to drink two litres of water. We eat healthy every single meal. We exercise every day. And it's really important to know that that did not happen overnight for anyone. We all started with one thing. And one thing became two, two became five, five became 10. And that became a whole lifestyle of healthy habits. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter where you start. My suggestion is start wherever it feels easier for you. What feels natural for you in your progression of that? For me, it was exercise because I felt like emotionally that gave me so much more. When I started exercising, I wanted to make healthier food choices. When I made healthier food choices, then I started thinking about, oh, I'd like to work into meditation. I would like to journal. And those healthy habits just started to build on each other. Now, I do suggest that you really give yourself a good two to three weeks before you implement another healthy habit. And this is one of the reasons why people fall off the bandwagon with uh, those New Year's resolutions and, you know, lose all this weight in such a quick period of time. Uh, it's simply not sustainable. It's not built on a strong foundation for long term results. And unfortunately, for a lot of us professionals that are trying to, to preach those things, that's not the sexy solution. That's not what people want to hear. They want that magic pill. But to be honest, if you really want to keep it off for long-term health and happiness, and not just physically, but in talking about your emotional well-being, it takes time to build on these habits. It doesn't just happen quickly. But it is something that you can definitely goal set. You can set those benchmarks and you can achieve anything that you want and stack them in any order that you want. So if eating food, uh, if eating healthier food feels easier for you before even thinking about exercising, start there. If just going for a walk and listening to a good soundtrack sounds appealing to you, start there. It doesn't matter where you start as long as you actually start somewhere. So you've got a baseline to go from. So how can I help you with any of this? The first step would be to jump on a 15-minute uh, discovery session with me. I can help you get really clear on 
what the challenges are that you're facing right now and where you want to overcome this for your health and body. And this call is open to absolutely anyone. So my current clients who are with me, they are always welcome to give me a call. I am very hands-on with all my clients and all my programs. I'm very present in that. So if someone's getting stuck with doing something, you, they are free to just book in one of these consults anytime that they like. Let's just talk it through and then get you back onto those um, healthy habits. You know, once school holidays happen and things, Easter happens and the fridge is full of chocolate, we fall off, right? And that's okay. We're human. It's always going to happen. But the point is that you recognize it and then you jump back onto those healthier habits and, and getting out of that program. So within this 15 minute call, it's really fast paced call. And it's really just me giving you some direct hard questions for you to answer. So we can really help you and strategize out something in a few 15 minutes. So uh, we basically just look at your current schedule and your lifestyle, what your goals are, what your challenges are, and see what's possible for you within the next 90 days. That's really a nice framework to start from when you want to build some healthy habits. We dive into your schedule each week. We work out what's going on, what's going to work for you um, and help you come up with some plans of maybe meals or prioritizing those key tasks that you feel are those biggest boundaries to working towards you. Um, and then we deep dive into uh, just some recommendations to stay one step ahead, no matter what happens. And so you can keep executing without any excuses. Um, and in order to make the lifestyle fit for you for a long-term benefit, you really need discipline and structure. Motivation's great, right? And it's really fun. Like motivation is one of those fun, exciting things. But at the end of the day, it comes down to having the discipline to stick to something to really benefit from it. And creating these things are going to help you feel clear, confident, and excited about your future body and your health goals as well. So I just like to finish on saying that time is what we want most, but we use it the worst. And I think that sums it up so perfectly that we always say, if I had more time, then this would happen. Oh, I just need some more hours in the day. We all have the same 24 hours and it's how we maximize it and how we use it best will ultimately see us succeed in the results that we want. And that's across all areas of our life, with our health, with our fitness, with our personal or professional goals, whatever you've got, it all comes down to managing time and those priorities of what they want. So I hope you found that information helpful. Um, I'm across pretty much all the platforms you'll see me around, but uh, primarily Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn is where I hang out. Um, I've also got some stuff on YouTube. These webinars are uploaded to YouTube. So if you miss anything, if you want to go back and watch future ones, you're most welcome to do that. 